So one of you, um, I believe the username is Kegonold, um, wanted to uh, know about subnetting. So here's the next section. Uh, we're going to talk about subnetting, and we're going to show you how subnetting works. Once you know this foundation of how subnetting works, it's easy to apply math to understand how to, you know, do it in your in your brain. And you know, you can't do big stuff. I mean, you probably can, but you're going to know this really well that you know, turning a slash 24 to 25 wouldn't be too difficult or slash 16 to 17 and, you know, things like that and figuring out the mask. Whenever you come to a situation or, or exam question and there's subnetting in it, at least you have this in the back of your mind of just knowing how it works and then just it'll help you figure things out and you don't need a calculator. Okay, so let's get started. This is a uh, IP address and it's separated. It's grouped into what we call octets. So each item here is an octet. So if there's four different numbers separated, separated by those periods, then that means that there's four different octets. Each octet, you know, means eight, you know, octagon or octopus, eight, right? So eight bits are in an octet. So if there's four octets, that's a total of 32 bits, okay? Does that make sense? Now that you know how that works, we got to go into binary numbers. And it won't be as bad as you think it would be once I break it down for you. Okay? So a binary number, imagine that there's eight bits. Each bit is a one or a zero. That's what computers understand. One and zeros. They don't understand strings or anything. We literally convert whatever we like to ones and zeros so computers can understand it, okay? So if you wanna write a binary number to represent 192, then you need to reference the, the eighth location and turn that on, or one, and then the seventh location and turn that on as well, which are these two numbers, okay? And then the rest of the numbers, you're gonna turn it off. It goes from right to left to count up. And it doubles. So one doubles makes two, two doubles makes two doubles makes three. I'm sorry, two doubles make four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, one twenty-eight. And then it just goes one, two, three, four, you know, from the uh, right, just how many bits there are. Right? This is eight bits. So again, we're gonna turn off the rest. So the number looks like this. That's a binary number. We turned on the eighth and the seventh bit and then turned off the rest. So 128 plus 64 equals 192. And that's it. You know, you've converted this binary number to 192 or 192 to a binary number, right? Now that you know that, let's do another example, 168. How would you do this? Like, think about it, right? We got to turn on 128, right? Do we turn on 64, that seventh one? Do we? Mark that as a one? No, it'll be too big. So we actually need to turn off 64, turn on 32, turn off 16, turn on number eight, and let's add it. 128 plus 32, what does that equal? 160. 160 plus eight equals 168. You can get any number you want, but you just have to turn on the right bit um, to get that number. Okay, so any number is just going to be one of these uh, bits um, with a one or zero. Okay, again, let's take an example. We have 255, 255, 255.0. You write it down as that. Okay, does that make sense? We're populating all ones, which will give us the maximum number, right? Now let's put it, put that into a uh, a network host uh, scenario, at or yeah subnet mass always has to match for all the hosts residing in that network. So for all the hosts in one network, they have to have the matching subnet mass to talk to each other. Um, and this is a slash twenty four, a slash twenty four meaning there's twenty four bits. Okay, does that make sense? The rest are zeros. So if you were to count all the ones, you get 24 ones. Okay. My IP, and if you can, 
you know, if you want, go to command, go to run and type in command and type in IP config, you can get your IP address, with hatch, which it also shows you your subnet mask and your default gateway, which is your router, right? Now, my IP, this is an example, is 192.168.100.50, and my range is 192.168.100.1-254, um, meaning I have a total of 254 possible addresses I can assign. Now, let's do another scenario. Let's do a slash 16. So a slash 16, basically what you're doing is you're moving that that needle or that line to the middle. When you move it to the middle, that means you're getting less networks, right? Each, you know, each number on the left side, that means how many networks you can make. So you can make as many networks as you want, but you have to have a different prefix, if that makes sense, okay? And the host part, it grows because you're giving it more bits, right? So now we have a total of 65,534 host IPs. That basically, uh, the reason of that is because as you move to the left, you just double. You know, 255 to 512 to 1024 to, two, you know, um, then... And just go from there, 2048, 4096. So it just goes. And the more you go to the left, you finally reach 65,534 host IPs. Okay? So you basically have more IP addresses you can assign. And what the, so you're going to see airports and, um, no, airplanes and things like that, that when you go on their network or a guest network, they're not going to have a slash 24 because that's not enough IP addresses. There might be a lot of people connecting. And if you don't have enough IP addresses to assign people, then if they don't get IP, they don't, their internet doesn't work. Everybody has to have a unique host IP in that network. So you're going to see slash 16s more often than a slash 24. Okay? You're just getting more host bits. And you're probably wondering why not just sign a big pool. Well, if you assign a big pool, you're eating away in your IP addresses that you can assign your, your IP addresses and um, you're eating away at that pool and then you start might running out of networks or um, IP addresses to assign. So you don't want to move it all the way to the left. But, you know, it's definitely, you could definitely do that. Another problem is if you move it a lot to the left, and you give a lot of host IPs. If you have um, devices that do network discovery or tries to find other devices or you try to do Chromecast or things like that, it's going to be a little bit more slower because you got to scan through 65,000 host IPs to find the device instead of 254, right? You always want to just try to estimate how many IPs you need for that network to assign it, okay? So let's move it one notch to the left. So that becomes a slash 15 because there's only 15 bits for that network range. And then we're getting an extra bit for the host IP. So now what happens? Well, we're going to turn that one to a zero, right? The, that one. And then we're going to turn that 255 to a 254. And it's just simple math. You subtract um, that that digit from 255 and you get 254. If you move it again to the left again, you then subtract three from 255 and then you get 252. So, and just keep going from there, right? So that's how you can kind of calculate in your brain what that subnet mass number should be without even having to use a calculator. You just subtract. Now the host doubles. So this is when you probably can use your, um, brain but you can estimate 65,000 and then double it you're like okay it's at least 120,000 so when these you get these multiple choice questions usually it's it's very broad it's like 100,000 and then 500 or 250 they just want to know you have the general idea most of the time the questions aren't going to be uh in these high number ranges they're usually going to be rather easy where you can sort of calculate in kind of the hundreds or thousands or things like that but um you have a general idea that or you're at a better place to answer that question because you know how subnetting works okay now 
what happens when you do a slash 15? Well, you also get your IP range, so that IP range changes. So you get a 192, 168, 0 0.1, all the way to 169, 255, 254. Okay, that's the maximum IP range that you can assign, as well as the uh, first IP. Okay, so let's do another scenario. Let's do a slash 25. A slash 25 is going to be, if you know a slash 24, right, then you have 128, right? That's now the available IPs for a host, okay? So again, you turn out all the ones, that 255, 255.254.0.0 becomes 255, 255.255.128, right? Because again, if you're moving to the right, then you're adding, you're adding to that zero, right? You just collected that 128th bit, you add it to the network, and then it's now 255, 255, 255.128. And that host IP it cuts in half, and I apologize, it's uh, but that should have been 250, 250, uh, 254, it cuts in half, and now it's 126. So what does that look like? That's 126 host IPs, and that's what the subnet mass is, 255, 255, 255, 128, okay? And that's basically it. You have an understanding on subnetting, hopefully, that you can just do it in your brain, and uh, that's what I do. Whenever I have any subnetting, it's pretty, it's pretty easy uh, for the most part. When you get, you know, 255, 255.0.0, that's a slash 16. Or sometimes they don't even say the subnet mask, they'll say slash 16. And then you have to be like, okay, that's 255, 255, 0.0. Again, slash 17, right? Then that means you move one to the right, right? You're moving that line to the right. You're collecting that 128 bit for the network mask. So maybe it's 255, 255, uh, 128.0. And then the host, if you had 65,000 hosts, and you moved it to a, uh, a slash 17, then you um, cut those hosts in half, right? So now 65,000 that you had becomes 30,000, 30, right? Something like that. And then you'll be able to kind of figure that out. Does that make sense? Hopefully it gives you a better understanding of subnetting. It's really doubling and cutting in half, subtracting from the mask. And if you know bits, you can break down subnetting pretty well. Practice this. You can't just, you know, what, you know, after you're done with this video and just know it, I would practice it and just try things out and then verify what you calculated with a subnet calculator, right? And then just try to validate it. But that's it, guys. So hopefully this helps with subnetting and you found this helpful. If you like this, uh, please like, subscribe. Please comment below if you, uh, you know, want to learn anything else that, um, that you have challenges with and I'll be more than happy to help you. And yeah. Thanks, and stay safe.